All right, guys, uh, Sam and Chad here. We are going to do a quick presentation. We've kind of upped our presentation skills a little bit here, or at least we're trying to. Um, <laughs> we are going to talk about the, the programming um, for April, May, June. Um, we don't really have a name for it per se. Uh, if anybody wants to contribute a creative name, by all means. Uh, but we could call this a spring block, right? Uh, if, if, if this, you know, January, February, March was, was winter, we could call this a spring block. Uh, the, the way we're kind of mo uh, evolving the, the, the programming approach here, um, if you guys remember last time, we, we started to integrate more buy-in from members of the coaching team to, to make it a more collaborative effort. And we really like the idea of doing that and the, uh, but this time around, we're going to make it a little bit more, um, we're going to start to layer it a little bit more. Um, we found that one of, the, one of the downsides to the way we did things um, in the first cycle was um, it was just a lot all at once. Um, mm -hmm. the, the test week itself just had a ton uh, built into it. And uh, the retest became even more daunting because the exertion and the effort put into the retest is typically more because people are, are kind of craving and, and reaching for those PRs. Um, so I felt it personally. Um, I, you know, a lot, I know a lot of people got pretty um, beat up, you know, physically beat up from, from the, the cycle and, and the test retest, um, which is kind of expected when you're training for these task specific things. So um, one kind of asterisk that we want to throw out there for people is that like when you're operating at the you know kind of margin of your capability and going for PR you are increasing risk even if you've been training for it there is increased risk of injury um, and so we always want to make sure that people keep that in the back of their mind um, and to not get too hungry or too greedy at the expense of potential injury. So to be, be smart, listen to your body, listen to your coaches. Um, everybody here is looking out for your best interests. So um, just kind of a, a general disclaimer on the whole test, retest, PR mentality. Um, we are still very much in this for the long run, um, but we like to use the these like short-term goals to keep us motivated for the long run. If you don't have short-term goals, it can be very hard to stay motivated. You fall off off the track, and the long run doesn't even become a thing because you're not even you're not even leading a healthy lifestyle anymore because you're not motivated to show up to the gym. Right. Um, so that's just a little bit of context. We want to keep you guys motivated. We want to do things that everybody wants to get better at. And so um, this cycle, we've we're going to layer and distribute the the components of the programming. We're going to kind of spread them out a little bit more. Um, that's that's the kind of lesson learned that we got from the first time around this year. Um, so uh, Sam's going to talk a little bit about uh, Murph because that is um, very much around the corner. It's about six weeks out. Uh, that's a crowd favorite. It's a community favorite. Um, if you've never done it, we'll talk a little bit about it. If you've done it before, um, you know some of this may be a little bit repetitive for you. Um, I'm going to be talking more about uh, snatching. Uh, snatching surprisingly was the second most uh, favored movement in the programming survey that we sent out back in December, uh, just behind back squatting. Um, as far as the barbell movements go, snatching came second. So that kind of surprised me that so many people like it. I love it personally. I know Sam's a big fan, mm -hmm. um, but we just, we don't know how everybody feels about it. So it was interest, interesting to see that kind of validated. Um, and you may not love it, but the idea is that if you get better at it, if we spend some time honing that craft and you can start to feel more confident in it, you may actually find that you, you do enjoy it and you do like it. Um, so I'll be talking a little bit more about that. Um, and then uh, Dave, Coach Dave has uh, some ideas on, on some things he's gonna be working on, but we're gonna delay the start of those until we get into some of these. Um, and Cody, Coach Cody as well is gonna be um, uh, affording us a, a component um, and so that's gonna be how we like I said layer this throughout the next few months um, and what we'll do is when we have a new component we'll present it to the group so you guys can understand it so you guys can see what the, fr the time frame of it's gonna be what the context of it's gonna be how the training is gonna look um, just so you guys are aware that there is there are underlying 
ob objectives and there is an agenda to what we're doing, mm -hmm. all right? So with that, um, I'm gonna let Murph, uh, let Murph, Sam talk a yeah. little bit about Murph and, uh, and, and, and it's a, it's, you guys, this will be what? The six, 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 well, was six, 2016, was that your first one? That was there? the first, because we, we didn't open it. No, we would have done it in, we would have done it in 2015. Okay, I don't so. know how many people would have done it because that was, we had opened it, we literally opened in April. Yeah, the gym was like just open. We, yeah, we were supposed to open in January, but they don't make asphalt in January. So yeah. we couldn't open until May. Um, or we opened in the second two, the last two weeks of April, and then May was our first like real month being open, our actual like official month where we took took payment and so you guys did it yeah so that would this this that would make this the sixth, sixth. Year. this would make this would be a sixth year then yeah. so quite a few years cool so um yeah so murph um most of you guys know what it is if you don't uh it's a staple in crossfit uh culture as a whole on the whole and um i think i want to say the first year that it was posted was 2006 maybe 2007 it was one of those years. It was one of the very first years that I was doing CrossFit that it came around. Because I think the first hero workout was 2005. I think that was the first year that they, they did. Um, uh, it was all the guys from, um, uh, this was back when CrossFit was was still in its infancy. And they had they had a really big tie-in to the Navy SEAL community in um, over in um, Santa Cruz or, or San Diego there. Um, and uh, that was when Dave Castro was still in the, in the SEALs. And, um, and then... Um, you would never know it looking at him when he does his workouts right. now, but he was in, he was in the Navy SEALs. No offense to Dave Castro, but um, he, um, he gets plenty of he gets roasted plenty on social media. Yeah, so it's all, I'll roast him there. If you yeah. want to see some funny videos of him, go go look up his training videos that he did for the Navy when he was still in the SEALs, yeah. teaching people how to back squat. It's quite quite funny. Um, but anyway, so he um, CrossFit had a big tie into the Navy back then, and I mean they still do at this point. But they started doing all the the first couple hero workouts are for the the seals that died during Oper Operation Red Wing, which is Lone Survivor, that whole thing. If you've seen that movie or read the book, um, so Murph is is for that. The the guy who was in charge of that unit, and um, so if you that's a little bit of the backstory on it. So I think it was in two thousand five or maybe it's two thousand five that they released. It. I can't, I can't remember. find the original one. It was real early on that they did it, um, but they uh, but anyway. So Murph is a mile run, uh, as prescribed. It's a mile run, hundred pull ups, two hundred push ups, three hundred squats, one mile run. Uh, with a weight vest on. It was originally called body armor, hence the weight vest, right? Mm -hmm. And um, they, um, uh, you know, doing it, doing it, we'll, 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 you know, take the elephant, we'll take care of the elephant in the room right now. Um, not everybody should and can do MRF as prescribed. To do it prescribed with a weight vest, one mile run, 100, 200, 300, one mile run, it's, it's a real tall order. Um, you have to be ready for it. Um, you know it's it's a lot so don't go into this one even if you even if you follow everything we're doing if you've never if you've never done Merc before I highly recommend not doing it unpartitioned weight vest for your first time it's mm. just it's not gonna end well for you um, you're gonna you're gonna have a you probably have a really bad time um, I would even say if you've never th I tend to be pretty conservative I personally mm -hmm. never even did Murph uh, with a weight vest until I want to say like 20 18 or 19 mm -hmm. and I've only done it twice with a vest mm -hmm. full all the way through never unpartitioned and when we say unpartitioned we mean uh, 100 200 300 straight through you can't right. break them up uh, partitioned which is often the case a lot of people partition it you can break those reps up however you want and it'll, yeah. commonly people will do like 10 20 30 or 5 10 15 yep. and they'll just do multiple rounds of that to keep themselves moving yeah C case in point is um, from the I think it was what the 2017 CrossFit Games. They did Murph, but they didn't partition it, mm. and it was. And it, granted, it was very hot that day. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, Kara Webb, now Kara Saunders, ended up getting carted off the field. I mean, there's that video of her like weaving and bobbing as she's coming to the finish line. Yeah. Um, you know, to do Murph unpartitioned with a weight vest on is is a tall order, and it's and kind of playing off Chad's Chad's message in the beginning here about um, you know whenever you're testing, you're kind of entering that zone of you know safe versus unsafe you're, you're there's risk involved it's a risky proposition to do it if you're not if you're not if you're not suited for it if you haven't done the training you haven't done it before you've never worn a weight vest before it's something you probably want to avoid doing mm. um just for the health and longevity component of of um of your person yeah and um, I, 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 here's a here's an interesting proposal would you 
Would you recommend somebody do it unpartitioned without a vest mm -hmm. or partitioned with a vest? Which one do you think is harder? Partition, partitioned. So I would say, I would say. It's a tough, it's a tough question. It's a tough question to answer. Personally, I would say partitioned with a vest, honestly. It's harder. Harder, yeah. it's harder. Simply because uh, for thinking as myself personally, everybody's gonna be a little bit different, but thinking as myself personally, even doing it partitioned with a vest, what's gonna catch me is the, the push-ups. And I know no matter whether I'm doing sets of 10 push-ups, uh, whether I'm breaking down the sets of 10 push-ups or sets of five push-ups partitioning it, it's going to be brutal on my, on my arms. Um, and I'm going to hit a wall there and I'm gonna have to break my push-ups down into twos or threes. And um, so regardless of if I do it uh, uh, partitioned or unpartitioned with a vest, I know my push-ups are gonna, gonna fail first and it's gonna just be a grind for me. Now, everybody's a little bit different. Some people are really good at push-ups and they could probably get away with, with doing, the, doing a partition with a vest and that might be easier for them than doing it unpartitioned mm -hmm. just because of the sheer volume in a row like that. Um, but I think, I think everybody's a little bit different with that. But for myself, I would say par partitioning it, doing like 20 rounds of 5, 10, 15 with a vest would be harder for me yeah. than unpartitioned straight through. Yeah, and I would even say like if you're, if you're thinking about trying it unpartitioned, you should probably try to do it mm -hmm. like, what would it be? 20, 40, 60, yeah. multiple rounds of 20, 40, 60. Yeah. It would be five rounds, I think. Um, doing it partitioned in bigger chunks before yeah. you make that jump to try to do it uh, unpartitioned. I would, I would agree with that. They did that at the game. The following year, or maybe it was two years later, that's what they did. So at the games, they, they did Murph straight through, I believe, and then no, no partitioning, just straight up Murph. And then in the following year, they retested, they redid Murph, yeah. or maybe two years later or something like that, and everybody was faster, nobody died on it, um, it because breaking it up does help a significant amount. Yeah, yeah. Um, so making, forcing those, that, that um, you know, that rest, so to speak, from a movement mm -hmm. does help. So yeah, if, you're, if you haven't done it fully unpartitioned and this is your first time going into this kind of volume and this kind of, this kind of a workout, you know, I'd highly recommend doing something like what Chad just suggested and you know we'll we'll talk through it on the day of the day day of Murph and everything yeah. like that and help you guys make a good decision. But just be mindful of that. That's the elephant in the room with this. Everybody wants to do Murph with a with a vast unpartitioned. But again, like you got to weigh weigh the weigh the risk reward there. Yeah. And, and this is a it you know doing it for the first time like that is a risky proposition. It's very much a, a CrossFit thing though, right? Mm -hmm. To want to put the vest on and to want to do it RX. We get it. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of people. If you don't do RX workouts normally, mm -hmm. this is not the one to all of a sudden try to do RX, right? Just because it's like yeah. Cindy like movements. It's it's pull ups, you know, push ups, and and uh, air squats. You. It may, it's, it may seem a little bit more benign, but the volume is what gets you. Yeah. Um, what we have recommended for those of you, most of this conversation applies to people that have been doing CrossFit for a couple of years mm -hmm. and flirt with some RX workouts every now and then. Mm -hmm. um, for a large portion of the population, scaling workouts regularly, maybe only been doing CrossFit for six, 12 months, uh, a good option other than scaling the movements down to like, let's say ring rows and, and modified push-ups, um, you know, the air squats, usually people can handle that just because you can, we can all, for the most part, air squat well. Um, but doing the work with a partner is actually a really good option. Mm -hmm. um, it actually gets a little, in my opinion, gets a little bit too easy um, when compared to the suck factor that Murph is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're in that kind of beginner category and you're afraid of doing the workout, just grab a partner, somebody else who's maybe a little bit unsure. Um, you guys can run together, you run the mile on each end together, and then you basically share 20 rounds of five, 10, 15. Mm -hmm. I do a round, you do a round. We each do 10 rounds in total, then we run again. We're done probably 40 minutes in mm -hmm. and we got a good sweat. We live to fight another day. And now we've gotten our feet wet with what it kind of entails. Right. So, yeah. So, so that's something that we'll, we'll hit on and we'll talk about that in classes throughout the next, uh, it's like seven weeks now from yeah. Earth, right? From Earth Prep. So we'll talk about that over the next seven weeks or so in classes. Today's workout is a, is a great example. And, and one of the things that we're going to be doing to kind of prep for this is Weight Fest Wednesdays. Um, so every Wednesday we're gonna have a workout that does require or can can require a weight vest. We're typically gonna put it in that that RX plus category, because um, to be honest with you, Murph RX is is that one mile run 
100, 200, 300, one mile run with the weight vest. That's RX, that's prescribed. But to, to me, for most people, that's like a, that's a step up. That's like a RX plus workout. Yeah. So I wanna, you know, we kind of wanna build that, that idea right now and that, hey, doing this with a weight vest on, doing it RX plus, you know, this, this is where that, this is where you need to be to be able to do this. I 100% agree that the R, that weight vest version of Murph is RX plus. Mm -hmm. RX, uh, weight vest unpartitioned is like RX plus plus. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. And, and it's, it's that hard. So like, you know, every Wednesday we're going to be hitting weight vest. Wednesdays are going to be a workout with a weight vest on. If you're not doing that, I, you know, you're not going to be ready for Murph in no way, shape or form um, to do it with a weight vest, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, if you do the workouts that we have on Wednesdays, you know, and the other ones that are, you know, uh, 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 spread throughout the week, you'll, you'll be ready for Murph in some capacity. In one of the capacities that we're going to that we're going to write it out as, whether it's partitioned, unpartitioned, without a weight vest, partner, whatever it may be, scaling, whatever movement it may be. Um, if you just follow what we're doing over the next seven weeks, you'll be ready for it. And one of the workouts that we're going to be using to kind of give us a good idea, it's actually going to come up next Wednesday, is a, is another hero workout called Mall Pin, and Mall Pin is four rounds. It's an 800 meter run, and then it's 49. The 49 has significance to the to the to the individual that it's named after. Can't remember exactly off the top of my head what it what the 49 was, yeah, but um yeah, if you want to look that up real quick. Um, but it's 49. I believe it's 49 uh, air squat or 49 push ups, 49 sit ups, 49 air squats. I think that's the order. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, it has no pull ups in it, uh, which is a huge component in Murph. That is that is brutal because it sets your. It basically if you're doing it unpart if you're doing it unpartitioned. Doing 100 pull-ups into 200 push-ups is brutal on the shoulders. Um, it, it wrecks you. Um, but uh, mall pin is a good test to see where you're at with with volume, like Murph, because um, that's really what we need to think about is is the vol the total volume of Murph. So you're going to see a lot of high volume push pull workouts, squatting workouts, and running workouts over the next seven weeks. That's one of the big components that we're going to be working on is higher volume stuff to get us ready for Murph, the, the volume and the time requirements of Murph. So, um, mall pin's a big one. And the, the, the last big thing that we're kind of kind of be working on over the next seven weeks is is in skills class. And we've already kicked it off up around Lake, and I believe skills class is tomorrow night at Avitas, yep. right, at Goodland. Um, and, uh, and we're gonna be working on kipping pull-ups. I know some, uh, I had a number of people show up on Monday night. We, I think we had a pretty successful class. I've already had two people be able to take their strict pull-up strength and move it into um, um, pull-ups, uh, kipping pull-ups in a workout. Uh, just this morning, actually, they did a fantastic job with it. Um, and uh, you know, taking those those people who have that strict pull-up strength and be able to translate it into kipping pull-ups. You know, now the goal is to to start to kind of build that volume and build that that security in the movement, so that when you do Murph, when you do 100 pull-ups, you can you can manage that volume and stuff like that. So. Um, Maupin will be one of those big things we're doing, weight vest Wednesdays, and then a pull-up pull up emphasis, at least in the beginning of skills, you know, for at least the first couple weeks, and then we'll we'll deviate from there and go in some other more fun directions. But Yeah, could even talk running mechanics. Running mechanics would be another one to talk about. That'd be a cool one to do. Um, yeah, no, that being said, guys, when you see running pop up, try to get in here. Try not to mm -hmm. find yourself cherry-picking it out of running workouts. I know some people love it, some people hate it. It's very polarizing, mm -hmm. um, but the mile at the start and the mile at the finish of, of Murph can be very challenging if you're mm -hmm. not getting in and, and putting some miles in. Yeah, and and, and um, you know, if Murph, and here's the other thing too, uh, Murph, Murph ends up leading to our, our now annual, yeah. this will be a third annual, right? Third annual. Third, third annual uh, freedom run is what we call it. Guptil's uh, freedom run. Guptil's freedom run. You go get some ice cream at Guptil's. And, yep. um, I'm going to do it RX this year. I'm going to yeah. do it. I haven't done it's it yet. Solo? Solo. So, yeah. yeah, there you go. So yeah. Clovis, Clovis is the workout. And Clovis, Clovis is one of the... <laughs> It's on the on the on the absurdity scale. It's towards the it's towards the farthest end to the you know it's the most extreme end that you can get. It's to. hard. It's it's one of the hardest workouts in CrossFit. Yeah. So Clovis is is uh, is uh, 150 burpee pull ups right, and then it's 10 mile running. 10 mile running. There's one that I know that's worse than it, and it's it's a workout called Seraven. It's uh, uh, it's 100 chest to bars, 100 thrusters at 135, and then a six mile run. That's that's the most. That's the most absurd workout I've never I know. Heard of that. It's terrible. What is it? What's Ser the run? Seravin, uh, Severin. What's the run? Uh, six miles. Um, so you're doing a. You're doing. A, but Clovis is up there too. It's a pretty brutal workout. And so if you. But we do that as a team workout, and this is kind of what Murph builds into. So if you're looking for the next step after Murph, Freedom Run is what it becomes. And you know, some of you guys who are really into the endurance spectrum, uh, you know, you're really on that end of things. 
Maybe you try Clovis. Maybe this is your stepping stone to get to Clovis RX, doing it as prescribed solo, the 10 mile run from Gilderland or around Lake down to Guptals. You know? Yeah, and that um, there are ways to make that more palatable too. Mm -hmm. um, most common way is to get a team. Uh, a lot of people did in a team of either three or four. Doing it with a partner, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm probably going to end up defaulting to that just because I, I think I might be in a little over my head. But doing it with a partner allows you to share the burpee pull-ups in half. Mm -hmm. um, and then you're running, like you just trade off running a mile or two at a time mm -hmm. um, to get there. Um, but it ends with ice cream, which is the best part. We all get ice cream. And uh, it's on the 4th of July. Um, we, so we start at both gyms and we meet in the middle. And it's just a really cool... Uh, kind of community event we even did it last year during the pandemic and uh yeah it's pretty 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 cool stuff so that's that murph kind of like leads us towards that and yeah. uh if you're if you're if you're interested in that you probably want to kind of keep up some of that same style of training making sure you're keeping mm -hmm. your miles up and uh and and some of that and, and making sure you're getting in on days that have more push push and pull volume mm -hmm. um but yeah, that, that pretty much concludes it. I mean, uh, Murph is on Memorial Day, uh, the 31st. It's usually, we'll, we'll probably run a couple sessions of it just because we'll be in the gym this time. Last year we did it remotely um, on Zoom. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this year we'll be in the gym. Uh, we'll be using the space that we have. Maybe two separate heats. We'll, we'll have to see. It's probably going to be at least two heats, right? Yeah. I mean, historically up here we've, we have a lot of people show up for Murph, so yeah. we'll see. I mean, yeah number of people we can fit a lot of people so. yeah between inside and outside right yeah yep. um so let's on that note let's kind of transition to um snatching. Uh, to snatching. i did have one more thing before we switch <laughs> okay we we pumped the brakes a lot here we also hyped it up a lot mm -hmm. but at the end of the day the point of doing murph is to find is to put yourself in the suck it should suck at some point mm -hmm. and the yeah. reason is it's our kind of it's a it's a bit of a, a token of our sa of, of 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 sacrifice that we have we're going to offer up mm -hmm. and appreciate as appreciation for the the people that paid the ultimate sacrifice to protect our freedom so right if you don't find yourself in the suck we got to maybe make a change and make it harder somehow uh, that, because it that, should suck that doesn't mean go to the go to the t t absolute limit don't yeah, no, don't, no, don't no, go to the absolute no. but there's it, a wide range of it of it sucking yeah. that doesn't involve you needing you getting hurt and that's yeah, what we're trying yeah. to prevent is we don't nope. want anybody to get hurt doing nobody it. go to that level but make yeah. it suck yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so uh on the snatching note so this is like i said um a kind of a surprising crowd favorite on the um from the survey um uh, a personal favorite as well uh we're gonna do a soft test in actually this friday uh, the four, the sixteenth, and I, when I say a soft test in, I mean that we're not really going to go, we're not really going to emphasize going to a a, a, a true mm -hmm. one RM. Um, we're just going to kind of retest the waters with where we're at, um, refamiliarize ourselves with the movement. Uh, we have been doing a little bit of snatching. Didn't we do some this week, or did we not? Do we have uh, the last, past this last week or last, last week? Last week. Did we have any last week? No, um, we we did the clean and jerk. Oh, we did uh, Monday. Monday we did last Monday the fifth. We did. Uh, hang two hang power snatches, one power snatch. Yeah, seconds, yeah. So yeah. it's not like we haven't snatched. Um, we we have done some snatching. It just hasn't been on the same frequency as like the clean and jerk work that we've been working on, um, which is kind of phasing out now. Um, and and uh, we saw a lot of PRs on Monday with the clean and jerks. Yeah, we saw quite a few up here. Um, you know, and people people uh, people hit some good numbers on it. Yeah. So it was, it was a good time with that one. Um, so, so the soft testing will be Friday, uh, meaning we're just going to kind of feel it out. It's mixed in with the workout. So it's an EMOM that alternates mm -hmm. with, I think, an AMRAP. And the idea is that it starts light and it builds. And when people are doing, when you're snatching in the middle of a Metcon, um, there's obviously some risk involved. But one thing that we've noticed is that it helps people not overthink it mm -hmm. and just kind of do what they know. And um, as long as we're all smart about making reasonable jumps and knowing kind of when to when to stop, things can can be pretty safe. Um, so that's the soft test in, and then we can use the, either that or previous one rep maxes that we may have from our past um, to kind of work off of on a percentage basis. Um, the snatch work is going to alternate. It's going to be every five training days, not including. Sunday, so we don't really can uh, we don't we leave Sunday kind of open for the Sunday coaches to program, and so we look at our six training days as Monday through Saturday. So of those six, every fifth day 
is you're going to see snatching um, as starting on this Friday. Um, the workload is going to alternate between pull emphasis. So we're going to be doing some positional pulling work. Um, and then on opposite days of that, you're going to be doing uh, overhead receiving work. So how you actually catch and stabilize the bar in, the, in a squat, an overhead squat position. Um, so you will see some movements like uh, snatch grip push press, overhead squat, um, snatch balance. Um, one of the things we're going to do to kind of frame that work is to test a three rep max overhead squat. Um, that comes, I think, the first, the second week. Um, I believe Third, it's the. Uh, I have it right here in front of me. I don't know yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the, you have it written in as the twenty eighth. Yeah, so the twenty eighth, we're going to be testing a three, and these de dates are kind of tentative, but um, the the overhead squat is going to be a three RM, and we're going to base a lot of the overhead work off of that three RM. Now, if you don't make it in that day, you could you could try to make it up sometime in open gym, or if you talk to a coach, or we could just use our one RM snatch. I know for me, it's about the same. My, yeah. my 3RM overhead squat is about the same as my max snatch. It's not going to be a, a perfect analogy for everybody, but it's it's a good it's a good basis. My best my best snatch is heavier than my best overhead squat. Is it? Yeah. I would say the majority of people. I've never tested an overhead squat before, though. So really, okay. Yeah. First so, time I put 225 over my head was with snatch. Yeah. Well, there's less <laughs> there's less load on the wrist and there's less eccentric associated with it when you can just get under it, right? I just like throwing it up there and see if I can catch yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Pull and pray. Yeah. So so that's we, that's the uh, kind of overhead work. Um, like I said, we're going to be doing a pulling emphasis. Um, and, and then this builds to a soft test out, what I'm calling a soft test out, because I want people to kind of get a, get a feel for their, their reattempt at, at, a, uh, at hitting a max before we put a ton of emphasis on maxing out. So it's like a, it's a day where you come in, the idea will be to build to a heavy single, you're, you're allotted one miss, once you miss once you get one reattempt, and then if you miss that, regardless of if you hit or miss that, you're done. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's some structure built in there. The hard retest is like the last chance to, to test out would be on the 14th. I think that's a Monday. And uh, the idea there is that we're gonna carve out a solid 20 minutes. We're gonna give you guidance yeah. on how to build up. Um, you're gonna be afforded really as many misses as you you want but we're going to try to limit people to i think no more not much more than three yeah. um just for time purposes you're probably not going to get a lot get, you're not probably you're probably not going to get to miss more than three times um if you do we, we screwed something up once you start missing more than three times it's it, the likelihood of making it fatigue sets in at maximal weights and, yeah. and it's really it's not it's, productive <laughs> yeah it's not it's not super productive yeah um so three, unless three there's times. like something weird going on and we're just like yeah, even in that case, it's like, all right, maybe we we, we tried very, this. Very rarely have I seen somebody make a lift after three misses. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's like, okay, maybe we just had an off day. Mm -hmm. let's, let's try to set up some time in open gym to, to maybe do a uh, retest when we're feeling a little bit better. You right, know, right. Maybe you had a bad night's sleep or a rough weekend or something. Who knows? Um, but that's pretty much it for the snatch stuff. Um, the, the, the snatch work will be prescribed as squat snatches so um mm -hmm. and that's going to be for the people that have have some experience snatching but um people that are newer to the movement we're going to try to pull uh, we're going to do more work from the hang and we're also going to do um, we're going to recommend that it's it's a power snatch and then maybe you're also doing an overhead squat but you're not dynamically pulling into the bottom um, and, and this is going to be a coach decision on any given day to make that recommendation. Hey, you know, we're still really new to this. Hey, or, or maybe our overhead squat position isn't ready yet. Let's just work on the hang power snatch. And that's going to be how we, we customize it for, for each person. Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty much it. I think we're doing okay on time. We're right at 30 minutes. I think that's uh, palatable. Hopefully you guys think so too. Um, Sam, do you have anything else you want to add before we shut it down? No, um, just be on the lookout for for this you know particular days. If you're really interested in, in you know improving your snatch, you know show up to weightlifting class. Yeah, um, weightlifting too. Yeah. Weightlifting class is a great place to come in and kind of talk to talk to myself or whoever's coaching it at the time uh, about getting better at the snatch and the lifts. And then usually Tuesday is snatching. 
Yep. Usually Thursday is, is cleans. Um, and then Saturday can be Saturday can be a mixed bag. We're gonna, anyway, yeah. at, at least for the those those the people who are gonna end up um, doing the weightlifting meet in May, we're gonna start doing both snatch and clean and jerk on Saturdays. Yeah. But you know that's neither here, here nor there for for most people anyway. So yeah, and I think um, the, you know if you're interested in doing more weightlifting and you're not in you're not coming to a weightlifting class yet, um, we can add you to the to the group. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a there's a Facebook group where a decent amount of chatter goes uh, goes on. The programming is posted there. Um, oh, and, and then we'll every try to- every Wednesday we're starting to do um, a. Uh, post videos to comments on a on a post we make in there and and you know myself and uh Alyssa and whoever else is floating around and some of the weightlifters from up here who are who are pretty experienced will will comment on the video and critique and stuff like that yeah, give you feedback you uh Anna Anna wisdom Oberk, Wednesday wisdom. Anna Anna Overkirker came up with the name a oh, wisdom Wednesday I think it is yeah, yeah. yeah. I just posted about it so um, yeah. if you're looking for feedback on your lifts uh, get 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 yourself into that group and post your videos in there. Yeah, you just more just, more feedback than what you might get in class. Right. So right, and and it really, if at the very least, it's an, a reason for you to videotape yourself and to see yourself lifting. Mm-hmm. Um, some people, I don't know if they truly value um, what that can that, that can provide you that perspective right. that you can gain gain from watching yourself lift with it with by videoing yourself. Right. That's how I learned how to lift. I literally just videoed every single lift I ever did, and I would watch it, and mm-hmm. then I would say, hmm, th- "This doesn't look right. That looked good. Maybe I should try this." And it's just that personal feedback loop so you can yep. you, you need to be able to see it. But yeah, you can't sit there and snatch in front of a mirror either. You right. know, like that's just not. Practical. Yeah, you wouldn't. You wouldn't want to. So there's some merit to that, but like you need to know what you're doing before you snatch in front of a mirror. Yeah, you don't want to break the mirror, certainly. Right. It's just <laughs> it's hard. It's also um, there's so much going on to be yeah. able to to watch yourself move in a mirror and do the movement. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would argue you have to be a, on the, on the more experienced side of things to do that as is. So yeah. So yeah, weightlifting. Get in there. Talk to us more about it. And Murph. skills. And get in yep. skills class. Skills. Murph. Uh, that's huge. Um, yeah, talk to talk to one of the coaches about about what you should be doing, what you should be thinking about for Murph. If you have questions about the level at which you're doing it, you know, so you can start mentally preparing now. But start talking to us now. Get get feedback on it, and you know, I think that's all I have for this. Uh, one final note on the weight vest: if you don't have one and you're not sure if you should get one, talk to us. Mm-hmm. But I'm a, I'm also in favor of everybody having one because. Mm-hmm. If you think about it, the weight vest, um, typically, if, you, if you're not aware, it's it's 14 pounds for the, the ladies and it's 20 pounds for the guys. I think that's the con- the standard case at standard, this point. Standard, yeah. There may be some 20. old workouts where they made everybody wear a 20 pound vest, but I'm not I'm not necessarily sure. Yeah, it's now it's nowadays it's all 20. It's and 20 and 14. Um, and it so, used to be everybody 20. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure it was. Um, at one point it was. But the if you think about it. If we had you do a workout that had like, let's say goblet squats in it, Mm -hmm. most of our members are grabbing at least an 18 pound kettlebell, Mm -hmm. maybe more like a 20, a 26 or a 35 or even more. So in the grand scheme of things, the weight vest isn't that heavy. It only becomes a problem when we add a lot of volume Mm -hmm. or we do a really high skill movement with it. So if there are workouts that, and we're we're doing weight lift or uh, weight vest Wednesday, just because you don't plan on doing Murph RX Plus with the weight vest, some of these workouts you may still find it ad, um, advantageous to, to experiment with a vest. Maybe you're going to do a round of mop in with the vest on. Mm-hmm. I think we're prescribing RX Plus on that workout as being the first two rounds with a vest and, and then the last two without. Right. Um, yep. Just to be somewhat moderate about it. Yeah. Because that, is that one supposed to be with the vest? No, mall pin's yeah. not supposed to be with yeah, the vest. Yeah, said that. So. Um, but if you're in that category, even even scaled athletes, I think, can make a case for doing some squats and ring rows and, mm-hmm. you know, uh, lunges and, and, and some running with a vest on. And you may find that it, it gives you some perspective. And when you're not training with the vest on, now all of a sudden you find a new gear. Mm-hmm. So there's, there's, there's some use for it. Uh, but the, we, we, we usually recommend, I don't know about you guys, but we usually recommend the Condor or Sentry plate carriers. They're the cheapest. Um, you do typically have to buy the plates separate. I think the vest itself is about $40. Yeah. And then the plates are probably another 40 or 50. So you're gonna be in around uh, at least 80 to $100. And then yeah. if you wanna buy a nice vest, like one of the 511 Tacticals, 
Those are like two hundred bucks. Yeah, never never pay full price for the for the uh, for the for the five elevens. You can get them. You can. You can you you can find them pretty cheap. If you can't find a sale for them, like personally, if you know somebody who who was in the military, veteran in the military actively, law enforcement, um, you know they uh, there's plenty of websites out there that give massive discounts to them for those vests. If you can, you know um, you know buy them buy them a coffee or a six pack or something like yeah. that, and they'll they'll probably give you give you give you the discounts that they get for that stuff. I think I can get. I think I got. I don't know if I still can or if I'd be able to find it, but I think I got my vest for actually I got my vest for free, but mm. but um but that's that's a whole nother story. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry about that. <laughs> forget, um, forget that you heard that. <laughs> yeah, forget that you heard that. I can't do that for everybody. Um, but you can ask somebody. Uh, you can you should never pay full price for those for the for the five eleven vest. You can always almost always find a discount on. So. Yeah, I um I would like to get one of those. I have the the Condor one, and we we have a couple down in in Gilderland that we kind of are kind of communal use. Um, mm. Obviously, we clean them, but um, they they've gotten pretty beat up. And the mm. biggest problem with those is that when they get kind of haphazardly dropped, the buckles break because yeah. the weight the, the plates actually land on the buckle. So if you get the Condor uh, Sentry vest, uh, make sure that you you're careful with it and you don't throw it around and break the buckles like I did. Um, they also seem to be just lesser quality. Um, those are those are 50 and then the plates, let's say if we went with 10 pound, uh, 20 pound, no there's 20 pound pair, 10 pound pair. The 10 pound pair of plates, so this would be for a, a men's vest, would be an extra 65. So you're at 115 for the fully loaded vest and it's a condor it's it's like kind of the budget option so you know if you can find a good deal on one of the 511s probably a better bet if you're looking mm -hmm. to use this you know more than a couple times a year the other the other two ones that i know of that are really well there's a company called i think it's i i'm probably going to pronounce this wrong but it's cry c r y e precision they have a vest that's it's um it's very comparable to the 511 it's the it's adaptive vest system abs and then there's another company called tactical tailor they typically have some very good stuff too. Highly doubt you'll be able to find that stuff on sale, but it's of the same quality as the 511. So if the 511 is out of stock, um, go with one of those two companies and and they'll um, they'll have some good stuff there too. I personally like the, the 511 just because it's super comfortable. Yeah, Can't never, beat it. I, 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 don't, I don't love the Sentry, or the Condor vest, um, but I don't hate it. Mm -hmm. And, but I've never said, oh, this is comfortable, so maybe I should look at the 511. Yeah, the, the, that, that, it matter. It helps a lot. It does help a lot. But the um, I personally recommend the plate carrier uh, as opposed to, if you guys are familiar with it, some of them have a pill, they call it the pill style, where you drop these little metal like pills in, yeah. and they look like, they kind of look like ammo. Um, they're meant mm -hmm. to simulate ammo, basically, right? Yeah. Um, and what the problem with those is that they shorten your range of motion. Yeah. Which some don't view as a problem. Some view that as a, as a, you know a benefit. Benefit. Um, but if you're looking to do however many reps and 200 reps in a, in a vest, do you want them to be half range of motion or shortened range of, range of motion? I would prefer that they're full range of motion because it's going to be more functional in the long run. But yeah. um, all right, let's end it with that, guys. I appreciate you guys listening. Hopefully, you're still hanging around and uh, shoot us some comments uh, and, and feedback on not only the content here but also the the, the format and whatnot. Could you hear us okay? Um, how's you know how's the video look? What do you guys What do you guys want to see from us? Um, and we'll keep we'll uh, keep the ball rolling. Cool. Thanks, guys. All right, guys. Thanks.